In the past few days, I was helping some people troubleshoot their Elk stack, which they were hosting locally for test and development purposes. Specifically, they already had their Elk stack up and running with Docker Compose up, and they were simply following one of my video guides here, or they were following another guide that they found online. Then separately, they had a completely different server in their office network. The server did not have Docker installed on it, but the server did have something like a website or a database or some other service that they wanted to monitor. So they wanted to install an Elastic Agent on this server so that it can stream metrics to the fleet server within the Elk stack. But they ran into a lot of connection issues between the Elastic Agent and the fleet server. And when I looked into each person's issue, a common theme that came up was that there was simply a typing mistake in their host file or they forgot to update their host file altogether. And typing mistakes in your host file can cause problems for two reasons. The first is this computer here won't know that Docker uses service names from your Docker Compose YAML file as host names. So in your Docker Compose YAML file, service names like fleet server, ES01, Kibana are treated as host names. So you need to make sure that you update the host file of this server to map names like fleet server, ES01, and Kibana to the IP address of your Docker and Elk stack. And the second thing is that when Docker sets up the Elk stack, it will create certificates with common names and SAN names like fleet server, ES01, and Kibana. If you try to access these services using any other host name, you will probably run into issues. So as an example, let's say this machine here is actually a Windows machine. Well, then I have a screenshot of an example host file on a Windows machine. You can see here that the Kibana hostname, fleet server hostname, and ES01 hostname maps to the IP address of the Elk stack that's being hosted locally. Now the Elastic Agent on my Windows machine will know how to connect to the fleet server on this machine, as well as the Elasticsearch uh, service. And if things still aren't clear, let's do a demonstration on some Linux machines. Let's say we spin up the Elk stack on a Red Hat machine, and then on a completely different Linux machine, let's install something like the Apache website, and then we'll install an Elastic Agent to monitor the health of the Apache service on this machine. So I'm just going to go to any one of these Git uh, projects, and these projects are being used by these four videos here. So just pick any one of them. Maybe I'll pick uh, this one over here. I'll grab the Git repository. I'm going to go to my Linux machine to spin up the Elk stack and it's using Red Hat 9.2. The IP address is 192.168.0.21. All right, so let's make a new directory. Check out the project. Okay, I think everything should be here. And let's just do Docker compose up, and then I'll pause until this is all up and running. Okay, it looks like everything should be up and running. And that means if I, and if you recall, my Windows host file is already pointing the host name Kibana to 192.168.0.21, which means if I go to my web browser here and load up Kibana, you'll see that I get this SSL warning and because it's self-signed certificate, I can press accept risk and continue. And I should see the Kibana website. If I did not have this updated properly, I would just get uh, a connection refuse or a timeout because this host name would have been pointing to nowhere. All right, so let's actually log in. The password is change me. As explained in my other videos, uh, we need to complete configuring the fleet server first. So I'm going to go over here, go to uh, fleet settings, and let's put in the appropriate output information. This is going to be ES01. Uh, 
and we're going to need the SL uh, or the CA fingerprint as well as the certificate authority here. And I have a small little script here that will do that for us quickly. Just copy the certificate authority into our host machine's temp file. Let's just print it. Uh, but also let's format it nicely for YAML purposes, meaning I'm going to indent every line with the four spaces. Remember, I keep talking about how the spaces matter a lot when pasting the CA into this field here. And then let's go ahead and generate the fingerprint, which is used by this field here. Okay, so let's just do this quickly. There we go. I'll take this CA fingerprint first, paste in here, and let's take this, paste it here. Yes, and in a moment, this should be up and running. Let's go over here. The moment I see CPU memory, that's a good sign, so I'll wait. Okay, it looks like our fleet server is uh, up and running and it's healthy. So let's go ahead and get a different Linux machine and install Apache on it. And I already have another Linux machine here. This is completely new. It's on my local office network of uh, 192.168.0.35. And because it's a completely new machine, I might need to do this first. Uh, PG, GPG. Okay, so uh, GPG. All right, so just update the repositories, uh, download Vim, curl, new PG, and GPG, just some useful tools that we need. So I'll pause until this is done. Okay, updates are complete. So let's install Apache. I'll wait until it's done. All right, Apache is installed now. So if I go to that machine at 192.168.0.35, we can see the Apache website. And I just added the uh, URL test, 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 just to generate a 404 error, just so that we can see it in some of our dashboards later. So I think we should be good. Let's go ahead and actually install the Elastic Agent. And we start by going to the integrations area. Let's get the Apache installation or integration. Add Apache. And let's go ahead and save and continue. And yes, we want to add Elastic Agents to our hosts. And we want it to be managed by the fleet server. But even though we actually have a fleet server up and running, for whatever reason, um, Kibana is not recognizing the existence of the fleet server sometimes or partially, uh, I'm not really sure, but I find that you can get around the problem by just coming over here, hitting add fleet server and go to advance. Uh, the fleet server policy has already been made, so have that selected. Go to production, type in fleet or any other name you want, type in the host name and it should be the docker service name port 8220 add host and that's it you do not need to generate a service token or um, as you can already see the fleet server is already connected so this part is irrelevant you just need to make sure that an entry uh, appears here so we could have just set this up before doing the integrations uh, but if you forget to, at least it was that prompt that brings you back to this page here. All right, so let's just go back to our policy that we've made. We have two integrations for it, Apache being one of those integrations, but we need to actually create the agent. So let's say uh, add agent, and let's run this as part of the fleet server. And here's the instructions. I'm going to copy this, go over here. Let's make this a bit bigger so it's easier to see. And I'll make a simple bash script so that I can edit it. And we're going to need the certificate authority. So you can type hyphen A, or you can actually just type out the full flag. Like that. 
and we're going to need the CA. I'm just going to put it here for now in the root ca.cert directory just to keep things simple. And here, let's chmod plus x install sh. And let's also make the ca.cert file. And we have that from our elk stack over here. So we printed this out earlier with our get cert details.sh file. I'm just going to copy this, paste it in here. And so at this point, if you make the mistake of running it like this, you're going to find that you're going to run into an error saying that it can't connect to the fleet server because it can't figure out fleet server uh, URL. So if we go here, the Elastic Agent is going to complain that it can't find this. So what we're going to need to do is take this and update our host file, All right? Just like we did on Windows. Oops. And 192.168.0.21, and we might as well. Oh, and we actually need the ES01, uh, the Elasticsearch server as well. Okay, and that should be good. Now our Elastic Agent knows how to connect to the fleet server and the overall Elk stack. And if you really want to be certain, you might as well add Kibana as well here. Okay, we should be good. Uh, the other thing I want to say is sometimes, I know uh, in some of my videos, sometimes I may have also added this. And then I add in the c.cert file. So sometimes I also explicitly mention the fleet server ESCA flag as well. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. Uh, and I have another video on that. But if you do run into issues, try passing this along. Uh, really, this value should be read from our, well, not on this page, but uh, when we're setting up the fleet servers and settings in the advanced YAML file. We should really be reading the CA file from there as opposed to this flag. But having this here doesn't seem to do any harm anyway uh, when installing the Elastic Agent uh, for these types of monitoring services. Anyway, I'll just delete this. I believe this should work as well. And now everything should be fine. So I'll pause until this thing is uh, finished loading and installing. Oh, and remember to press yes or else it'll just hang there until it waits for your entry. Okay, so that actually took uh, a little bit longer, quite a few number of minutes. I don't know why it seems to be a little bit slower with Docker Compose, but if anyone knows why, uh, let us know in the comments. But now that the agent is installed, let's actually go over here, click on here, go to the integration, and let's take a look at the assets and let's see if any data is already coming through. Yep, all right, so that's how we got an agent working uh, and how it connects to the overall Elastic Stack that's been set up by Docker Compose. Here, let's go here, just hit refresh a few more times. Okay, great, we see the 404 errors here as well. 